Welcome back to part two of our wine glass holder project. In this video, we'll pick up where we left off and create the CAM programming. CAM programming is the process of setting up routing strategies to efficiently remove material while preserving the geometry of the project that we're trying to make, in this case, wine glass holders. The output of this process is machine code, also known as G code, that you can load and run on your CNC machine. With the modeling complete, I'll switch to the CAM workspace. My first step will be to create a new setup, which will define the model and its work coordinate system. I'll select the model, move to the option that will let me select the Z and X axis, and I'll pick a corner to be the origin. Selecting the logical local workpiece origin, that is where the X and Y axis will increase in value as they move away, will make positioning the stock and zeroing the CNC machine an easy and repeatable operation. The first toolpath strategy I'll set up is the 3D contour operation. This will machine the fillets around the profile and contour the chamfer features. I'll pick the quarter inch ball end mill for this operation. And select the geometry profiles. Taking care to select the outside of tool containment to make sure we get the outer edges of the workpiece filled in. The simulate command can give us a good idea of what the G-code would do on the actual machine. You can run this in real time or, like I do most of the time, much faster. And what I'm looking for when I run this simulation is potential collisions. You can see from the green bar below there are no red events that would show up as vertical lines. And of course I'm getting the overall geometry that I was looking for. Next I'm going to create a 2D pocket. We could use a 2D trace here, but that would leave a large amount of material that would have to be ejected. The pocket operation will ensure that all the material is cleanly voided and safely ejected from the central hole feature in our wine glass holders. For our remaining 2D operations, I'll switch to a quarter inch flat end mill. Now that I look at the toolpath preview, I can see that I did not have multiple depths enabled. This would try to cut all the material in one pass. More than not being ideal for a clean cut, in a hard grass like bamboo, this could actually cause combustion from excessive friction. And as before, I'll use a simulate command to give me a good sense for whether this operation is doing what I thought it should be. And finally, I can route out the overall profile of the shape using the 2D contour operation. Selecting the geometry, and this time remembering to enable multiple depths. Now that I've built my three operations, I can go back up to my setup container and select simulate to see what all these operations look like netted out together. And I'll take a look, tumbling around the model to see if the geometry matches close to the profile underneath. And in this case, since both the stock body and the BREP model body are visible, uh, any any cuts into the stock that went too far would show the underlying body beneath. Next, and perhaps most critical of all, I'll add tabs to secure the workpiece to the surrounding stock. This will keep the part from being prematurely ejected and ensure clean, accurate cutting. It takes some experimentation to figure out what kind of tabs work best for your situation. In this case, I think four tabs would be perfectly adequate. I like to think ahead a little bit. So I'm going to name this setup specifically to indicate this is the milling operations for the top side, in case we decide to do this as a double-sided board later. Now I'll program my calculate speeds and feeds. I have two tools for the quarter inch ball end mill. I'm looking for 45 IPM at 14,000 RPMs. And for my quarter inch flat end mill, I'm looking for 50 IPM at 14,000 RPM. And these will give me my optimal chip loads for this tool and material. Fusion's not aware of what material we'll be cutting. You can set these physical properties as you model. Unfortunately, those properties don't come over to the CAM workspace. So it, it's vitally important that you explicitly configure your speeds and feeds for your tool and material. In our case, we'll have a machining time of about 10 minutes per board. And one more simulation, mostly to visualize the tabs. Now that I'm happy with the overall program, I'll go up to Post Process, make sure CNC Router Parts is selected as the Post Processor, and give a name for this. 
I'll be careful to name this so that I know this corresponds to a program for one board, as I will create several different programs for different nesting configurations. At the top of the program, we'll see a list of all the tools used in the program, in this case the ball end mill and the flat end mill respectively. I'll search for M1. This will show me where my optional stops are for tool changes and make sure that there's only one of those per program since I only have one tool change. It's important to explicitly save your version at key milestones. This will allow you to easily roll back to that if you ever need to. If I only wanted to make one board, I'd stop here and load the program on the CNC machine. In my case though, I'm looking for a little bit higher productivity. Fusion 360 and most other CAM products make it possible to create patterns from your toolpaths that you've set up. So in my case, I'm going to set up a 2x2 two two pattern and see how many boards I can fit onto a 2 foot by 2 foot piece of stock. To visualize this better, I've switched back to the model workspace and I'm creating a 2 foot by 2 foot cube. And this will represent my 2 foot by 2 foot stock that I'll load on the machine. And this will help us see how many boards we can fit. And I'll switch back to the CAM workspace. And under Setup, I'll create a new pattern. And I'll define the directions I want the pattern to follow. In this case, I'm creating a grid, and I expect I'll be able to get a two wine glass holders in the X direction and probably at least four or five um, in the Y direction. Now I'm going to copy these into the pattern. And one thing I've noticed here with the last update is it actually reverses the order of the operations. So I'm going to drag these back into the proper order so that we do the contouring first and the cutout last. Obviously, uh, even with tabs, you want to make that the last step. Re-editing the pattern allows me to start experimenting with different spacing. And I know how long the wine glass holder is, so it's at least got to be offset by that amount. And I also want to leave some edges around the board for clamping and work holding. So that looks like a comfortable fit for two. And now in the other direction, which looks like I need to flip, there you go, and again pretty close. I'll see if I can get them a little closer and then see how many instances we can uh, add on. Looks like we could at least get four or five. So we could do five. For my preferences, I think I'll stop with four. There's only so many wine glass holders I need in my life right now. Uh, and this will give me a little extra room for work holding and just keeping things tidy. Because the CAM workspace is associative to the models, we need to go through and edit and regenerate all the tool paths anytime we make an underlying model change. So we can visualize the pattern better. I'll update the stock to use the solid body that I created earlier. Now I can go through and regenerate the tool paths. And this time when I simulate the operation and use the stock option, I'll see a 2x2 two two size stock. During simulation, I like to turn off the actual B-Rep body so that I only see what would actually be cut. This will help show badness that may be obscured by those bodies. Now that I'm happy with the program, I can use the post-process command to generate the G-code for my CNC router parts machine. I'll change the name of this from single to 2x4 production. It all comes together next time. I'll take the G-code developed here and run it on the Benchtop Pro CNC machine from CNC Router Parts. Thanks for watching.